obviously from uh, Bacchus there. I know you've talked the last couple of media availabilities about him earning his opportunity and taking advantage of it. That homer that he hit to tie it, that another example of that? Yeah, I mean, he's earned more than he's he's gotten or probably ever will get if you're top basing it on being a teammate, um, work ethic, overcoming adversity. Um, but really just starting today is a reward for you know, his effort, I mean, that's a really good catch he made up against the wall in Lexington and then a couple other balls he tracks down because he's athletic and he wants to be out there. Um, and then probably the biggest thing was they kept hit a couple homers. You know, the wind's blowing out and Kirby did an unreal job for us and did exactly what we needed him to do and wanted him to do. Throw strikes and, and eat up a bunch of innings the way he did, but he gives up a couple homers in the course of that. And I mean, Bacchus almost took down that center field wall uh, twice, I had to go back and watch it on video, but uh, Stove, our, our video coordinator, he he said, you know, he about ran through that dang wall. And so that, that effort, you know, earned him tonight, which was a reward to get out there and play. And he certainly took full advantage of it, but he's going to take advantage of any opportunity he gets. And like I said, he's earned as many as you can imagine. Marcus Phillips got his first taste of SEC <clears> and then you know, came back and did well tonight. And then Andrew Binky, the bounce back. What did you like about those two guys tonight? The, the fact that Marcus was able to accumulate some reps and, and now in the big scheme of things, he's accumulated some reps. He's been out there with some consistency as of late, and that's really what he needs. I mean, the stuff is there. The mentality is there when, when he selects it to be or chooses it to be, uh, but the amount of reps there was key. And then Banky, we used him and, and Billy as examples out there of, you know, team-wise, those guys are unbelievable teammates. They're going to be as happy as it gets, and, and Billy had a huge hit there in the mix, but if you ask both of them if they wanted to do better as individuals, and there's other guys like that too, um, they'd say, yeah. And so don't talk about it, be about it. They, they certainly were. What were your thoughts on Dylan Lloyd today? How did he play? He did well. I mean, we wanted to go once through the order. Um, the Thursday game, it's our first Thursday game. They come in a variety of different ways at different times, and it, it affects things. Um, it's great to be in our league, and it's great to have the media exposure, but it's a little bit of a challenge, and so – with Kentucky's lineup combined with the Thursday game, we're a little sh short on options today. And so we needed guys to do what Dylan Lloyd did and log some innings. And um, the leadoff hitter is a good hitter, but he only saw one pitch from him. So he gives, you know, another, gets another ground ball. We just didn't quite make the play. And then the next two guys were lefties. He had struck out. They were going to be his last two guys no matter what. Um, so he could have finished, you know, at a 45 pitch count and a day that he was incredibly happy with. But the good thing is, I think there's a lot to be happy with and then also some things to learn from there, which is what he's trying to do overall. And um, I hope he feels good the next couple days so we can write him down and he's available this weekend. And if not, he'll be getting the ball again real, real soon. What do you know about Missouri, some of the challenges that they're gonna bring here this weekend? Yeah, I mean, um, I think it's a real balanced lineup, similar to Kentucky's two switch, two left. Um, a handful of righties is their typical lineup. So a similar look with that balance. Um, you know, they've been pitching it well, in particular game twos. Uh, but overall, just um, they're playing the game the right way. I mean, Carrick is, uh, you know, Carrick Jackson replaced me when I left Missouri, and he had been doing all kinds of stuff in the baseball world. He's now the head coach there. And um, Coach Jamison, who I played for, uh, and I owe a lot to is now the pitching coach and Bryson LeBlanc recruits for him. I recruited Bryson. Um, so not only a familiar jersey, but uh, familiar faces. And uh, I'm, those group chats and things like that, I choose to not be a part of because I'm this guy. Um, but there is, you know, some communication that goes around and I'm glad, you know, that group of people are happy and I'm, I'm glad those guys are, are there as, as coaches. I mean, it may work against us this weekend because, like I said, they're playing hard and playing the right way. And, you know, I went on a tangent out there with our guys. I mean, so longer answer. Personally, selfishly, I'm, I'm, I'm glad they're there. Uh, I'm glad that other thing's over with. That was a night, you know, I worked 90 hours a week at that place. And, uh, you know, I went to school there and, and gave it about everything. I, everything that I do here, I did there. And while that other regime was there, you know, you name it. My dad was in a uh, life-threatening car accident, and I'm getting yelled at in the third base box. Um, many other things, too. So I'm, I'm glad that's over with and there was a change. So we'll welcome those guys in here. But when the game starts, it'll just be like it was in Lexington or the weekend before against LSU. There's a lot of respect in this league 
everybody has for each other. But uh, you know, when the game starts, the game starts. With the opener, the last two weeks, it's benefited Causey. Stamos, I imagine, would have liked to have been gone better the second time around. How do you balance kind of both of those situations with seeing it benefit Causey and then maybe needing Stamos to bounce back if you're going to continue to roll with that? Yeah, to be honest with you, I think this weekend's different. Um, your, your question is, is makes sense, and it's an intelligent one and one that, you, you know, I wish we had exact answers for. But I think this is a little different because of the Thursday bump up and how some guys are throwing the ball, too. So... And the one thing that, that we kind of looked at too, and sometimes you oversmart or, or think you're smarter than you are, um, you know, matchup wise kind of matters a little bit too. And, and while we do know it, a fair amount about Missouri, we haven't kind of dove into it full speed. Um, we haven't at all. It's just now that we're deeper into the season, if you're on, you know, ESPN or anything, you're, you're going to know about these SEC teams to an extent. And like I said, I got some familiarity. It's where I'm from, but. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll kind of look at matchups and reassess how these guys look. And Stom was hot tonight, um, was going to be a safety ball there for a couple different innings. Uh, but fortunately, those guys at the end of the game are really good. I mean, Marcus, we already talked about, but Matt Dallas was outstanding, and JJ was just as good, if not better. Tony, you've been a guy who's been a head coach at a program in your first year trying to kind of fix a culture and change some things and get some things going in a different direction, get results while playing in the SEC. How difficult is it to manage all of that in your first year when you're building things? Yeah, it's it's hard in general. I think the easiest way to put it in perspective is what if you bounce to just year four? It's hard. <laughs> I mean, um, you know, Mississippi, we had great conversations with them and, and have a lot of speaking and having respect uh, for that coaching staff. They've been around a long time and done a lot of things, but the year after they win the national championship is a really challenging one. Um, so they're all challenging. And then you're going to throw in the fact that you're not as familiar with your personnel, um, maybe for what you like. I mean, everyone's going to inherit decent players, if not really good players, because of our league. But maybe it's not the setup that fits the way you're going to, you know, coach or the style of offense you want to run. So it shows you how much it complicates it. Because even when you've done, you've been recruiting the same way and you've been at the same school for 10 years, each year you're looking at an SEC play. It's it's holy hell. Um, so you, you can times it by three, four, five, or whatever you think the appropriate math is, but it's very, very difficult. And, uh, you know, like anything, you have to be persistent. And, you know, those guys are good dudes there, and, um, you know, so are the guys down at Alabama. I know it's their first year uh, working through that, but it's a tall, tall task. And those were – not that this wasn't stressful tonight. Um, we had we were bad news bears there for, for a top half of an inning, but – that, that was high alert, high stress, whatever we had uh, when we weren't supposed to go outside, orange threat or whatever, terrorism. We, we were on super red or whatever the worst color is every day here that first year. Anything else, Coach? 